Hey everybody, Rebels of Cloud9 here, and today I'm going to be building a pretty cool kit. I'm pretty excited about this one. Now, my French is not that good. Uh, you know, Canada's bilingual, but I never learned French in school. Uh, I know German, I've been studying some Japanese context, Swedish, uh, that bit. So if I'm pronouncing this kit wrong, uh, you can leave me a comment down below, but at least tell me how to you know, uh, pronounce the word. But I believe this is the Newport Delange NID622. This is a Heller kit, 72nd scale, and this is going to be a first for me. Um, number one, I have never built a Heller model kit before, and number two, I have never built anything of uh, French aviation. So, I'm pretty excited about this. I picked this one up just a little while ago, uh, in December. And I'm really excited to build this because it looks like a really fantastic kit. Uh, I really like this kind of um, 1930s style, um, you know, biplanes that they had in the, in the 20s and 30s. I really like this kind of look. It's a very elegant looking uh, piece of aviation. So let's take a look at the kit here. Um, like I said, I'm pretty excited about this. So here we have the first sprue. And we have the fuselage sections. They look pretty good. There's a bit of raised rivet detail, but that's actually being accurate to the real aircraft, which is pretty cool. You get the ailerons here in one piece, which I really like. And a bunch of other little bits there, uh, braces and part of the engine. The second sprue here is the wing sections. Now, what's really nice about the wing sections, and some other kits don't do this, is you know, sometimes when they have a top wing like this, um, they mold it in one piece. And the problem with that is, is it's you know very heavy and it ends up weighing down on the model. This is very nice, light plastic, and uh, comes in two nice halves. So I'm not going to have that problem, which is really awesome. A little bit of flash here and there, but that's more or less to be expected on a kit that's about this old. And the third sprue here has the rest of our pieces. We have these Y braces here, and they need quite a bit of cleaning. It looks like the seams were crooked, and so that's just going to need some, again, a little TLC to get that back in order. But we've got quite a detailed uh, components here. We've got some hinges there. We've got a step there. We've got a pretty nice looking um, cockpit here. We've got uh, gun sight and a whole bunch of other little pieces in there. It's pretty cool. And I forgot to mention that, but uh, on the inside of the fuselages here, there's actually some little details, which is pretty cool. They didn't have to add that in there because I don't really think you're going to see it, but uh, it's nice that it's there. And so then we got the rest of the, of the pieces. And there's a couple sink marks I'm going to have to clean up, but that is going to be very minor. And this is the last sprue, but I'm going to come back to this one in a moment. So this is a little strange. Here we have the, this is the history page and the uh, instructions diagram, or directions diagram. And that's just on this one piece of paper here. You know, usually it's molded in with the instructions, but no, not this time. So speaking of the instructions, they're very simple laid out pretty pretty easy you shouldn't have any problems with this all the colors are humbral they're all nicely numbered out there so I'll be able to look those up and convert them to whatever the Tamiya equivalent is and we have our paint guide here in the back and there's two different types that they have on here I'm gonna build this one which is the one on the box art so let's take a look here. Don't know what this paper is for. It says flash service. Don't know what that is. And here we have the decals. And it's almost the size of the box. It's pretty big and they look glorious and beautiful. And I can't wait to use them. And so what they've included here, they've included the nice rondelles. We've got the rooster emblems here. We've got these panthers here for the second option as well as the tail. Um, they give you the white stripes in here and the white lettering. And what's pretty cool about the lettering here is it won't show up, but I'm going to show you guys this. 
one second. So this, uh, these go here on the on the bottom of the wing here, and there are holes here, here, and there's a pin right here. And so on the decal, there are actually holes here, 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 here. So that's pretty cool. They, you know, you don't have to push the decal around it on top of it and accidentally rip and tear it. They just set it right around it, which is really awesome. And what's also really cool, and I don't know how well it'll pick up on here, is you have the white stripes, but the carrier film is just in between them, barely connecting them, so it's going to, you know, decrease our chances of them silvering on us, which is really, really awesome of uh, Heller to do. So, uh, last thing here. Yeah, here we have the propeller broke off. And the last sprue, I said we're going to come back to this one, it is sprue number four, and it holds the window. It's this tiny little Jordi LaForge-like visor window here, and you get this whole sprue for just that little piece. <laughs> I just think that's a little funny, and it, this broke off. I thought it was lost, but it was hiding in the box. So, yeah, that's about it for this uh, new port. I'm pretty excited about this kit. Really want to. I'm really looking forward to building this one. I really want to build it, and uh, today seems like a good a day as any. So uh, I'm gonna go get started on the canopy and all the uh, cockpit detail. Got the cockpit components all painted up, and I used wooden deck tan. It's supposed to be ivory, which is much lighter, but uh, this has got kind of a nice uh, canvasy color, which I like. Bit of NATO brown for the uh, leather on the chairs there. So I'm just going to apply some blue here and uh, one of the last things I want to do here after I get this in. Oh, there we go. Oop. There we go. Really, the best secure fit. That's better, I think. Yep. Let's use. Whoops. Let's use a little bit of extra thin here in the panels. Okay. That's much better. So the last thing I want to do before I glue the halves together is use this Agrax Earthshade from Citadel. It's a brown wash, acrylic, and uh, yeah, I just want to kind of paint this all over. Don't do that. Breaking it all up before it even gets in. Oh, missed a spot. There. looks pretty good. So now I can glue the <clears throat> fuselage halves together. I can use some regular cement here. Need quite a bit on the tail but not too much. I don't want to melt them together and then when you clamp them they 
warp on you. That's no fun at all. I've had that happen a few times before. And there. Okay. Come on. There we go. And there we go. So, some nice little detail in there. Oops, that's crooked. This side needs to go down. Okay, there we go. So, yeah. Nice little detail in the cockpit there. It's going to look a lot nicer when that um, wash dries. But, uh, I have a bit of a problem here. This kind of U-shape here, you can't really clamp it, so I'm going to use is just a little bit of Tamiya tape and pinch it tight like that, tape it over like so, and uh, Paint some extra thin there, like that. And there you go. So I'm going to go clamp this out and I'll be ready to uh, proceed to the next steps. As of right now, it looks like the world's most tiny airplane. <laughs> Doesn't it? Now, getting all this stuff to fit, I couldn't film it. It was, it was, it required every bit of my attention. And uh, I still don't think I have the fit quite, you know, quite as snug. But man, it was, it was just kind of brutal at one point getting these things all lined up and the wings are in there. So, uh, now I'm going to add in these Y braces and I trim down that little bit of excess plastic on them and uh, turned out very well and these just fit in here down onto there and so I'm just going to use a bit of extra thin cement on here And yeah, it moved. Heck, I'm going to put some on that peg. There we go. Ah, that's better. Okay. One thing I just thought of that I'll need to do... is uh, use the top wing here or sorry not the top wing, the bottom of the top half of the wings that's what I was thinking um, simply to check and make sure all the pins will line up oh, that's interesting there are um, crosses over the holes here it's just kind of cool. Whoever the engineer was, was marking where the holes needed to be drilled. And somehow that's left on the, uh, on the kit. Huh. Weird. But really cool. It is the, uh, initials of this Newport's maker. He's left his autograph. That'd be kind of an interesting thing, wouldn't it? If you had a, a model kit. And you know, a lot of times we have, like, uh, actually there's enough glue on there. Like we have Airfix and Revel, you know, written in the, in the side of the fuselage and matchbox and stuff. But wouldn't that be kind of interesting to have 
just the the autograph the signature of the of, of the engineer you know stamped in there as well this would be kind of cool because in a way it's kind of a work of art you know I consider I consider this to be a work of all art it's uh, you know I guess in a, in a sense a form of uh, sculpture making this is my two cents it's not worth that much anyways so yeah they don't fit at least that one doesn't so let's this needs to be turned slightly <laughs> this is really difficult there we go okay so yeah now all the pins fit and again this is super light which is really really nice so it's not gonna you know press down on any of this but it looks uh, looks pretty good I'm gonna measure this again here in a moment ah fell off there we go get back on there Yeah, they don't line up. Hmm. And I know they're put on the proper way. It just needs to be turned like that. There we go. So yeah, I'm gonna go and fuss around with these little Y braces, but um, it's all coming together. It looks pretty good. Sanded down the front here and all the edges. Um, this this part here needed a bit of filler not that much and I just gave this bottom half a layer of um, Tamiya liquid surface primer just in case but um, it I, I, there's only like one little dot right there and that was from removing it from the sprue that needed to be filled in so it's, it's a pretty well fitting kit which is what I assumed when I got it so yeah I'm gonna go and make sure all of this fits together and then I'm going to go and glue more of these struts just to make them more secure. Time for painting and all that jazz. So I built the top wing here. There's a couple little pieces that you put on. Looks pretty good. And uh, got all of this together here. And uh, ready for yeah whatever green. Now picking the green is the tough part of this this build. Um, Humbral has paint 80 selected and that's not the color I would suggest for this. Um, the box art is kind of again difficult because it's all sorts of greens but it doesn't exactly have <clears throat> the green to use on this model. So what was kind of cool is I actually found a picture of the aircraft and I read on a forum, um, it was a French forum, and it's, it was a guy who sounded like he knew quite a bit about these these planes, like he was kind of studying them and stuff. And one of the things that he said in there was that these uh, Newports were painted all various shades of green. So basically you can use any kind of green on there, um, and it would probably be accurate. Now, based on this picture, it seems to be a pretty dark green. So my choices were, uh, when I came to dark greens, I thought, well, JN green is pretty dark and it looks very good. Um, but I'm going to go with JA green. Um, it's kind of, it kind of matches more along the lines of the colors. So I'm not going to be able to get the actual color, I think, 100%. Because I don't really know, and no one seems to really have like an exact specified color. There's been people on forums guessing about it, but no one has really seemed to come up and say this is exactly what color they were, because I, I have yet to see a color picture of this. Uh, I don't think they ever took any. But uh, yeah, I'm going to use this just this color. I've uh, covered over the canopy here, and everything's sanded, ready to go. This is going to be a bit of a difficult thing to paint, but like I was figuring out how to how to do it, and I was thinking of 
you know, temporarily gluing this on top and then, you know, being able to peel it off and do the deck holes. But I've come to a different conclusion. I'm just going to paint half now and half a little later and that'll be it. So it'll just take me a bit longer to paint it, but uh, that'll be worth it in the end because I won't have to have a big thumbprint on it or something, who knows. But uh, yeah, I'm going to stick with this JA green. It looks it looks pretty good and and it's it's kind of you know like the, the color on here is pretty dark but this will be nice I think and it'll allow other colors to kind of come through so I'm gonna go mix up the paint and get ready to airbrush given it uh, two coats of future uh, except for the wingtips they're gonna get another coat here in a little while because I can't quite coat the entire thing but I uh, thought I would paint the um, silver on now because I'm that's gonna have to dry and that's gonna have to have a couple coats of future so I'm using I hate that they do this flat aluminum 
I don't know why Testers doesn't put the color on the front. You know, they have all the warning labels and then very, very tiny letters in the back of the barcode. They have it written there. It's very strange. Anyways, um, yeah, I'm going to paint quite a bit of this, um, more than the instructions say. So, it goes to about here. And uh, based on this picture I found, uh, one thing I, I noticed is the braces here. Um, this kind of N-shaped brace on the bottom here. Um, let me get that in frame. Yeah, this is all silver, but the Y braces are green. So those need to be painted as well. And there's some radiator-like things that go on the front here. You know, they sit in the front. I believe they are radiators. I don't I don't really know. Um, yeah, they're supposed to be two pieces put together, but I'm going to get to those in a minute because the ones that come, I'm still figuring out what to do with them because the ones that come in the kit are, are terrible. They have a huge sink mark hole in them and all the detail is basically, you know, gone. So I've got to come up with something to do there. But, um... Yeah, I quite like this this color here for painting all this. So, yeah, this is what I'm going to do is just paint the rest of this and um, move on to uh, the uh, more coats of future. So hopefully tomorrow um, this will all be dry enough and the future should be sealed in at that point that I can start deckling the model, so pretty excited about this, and I'm quite happy with how this color is, is turning out. I might have to do another layer of it. It actually looks pretty good right now, but uh, figure that all out uh, when I get there.